To commence the centenary video, we have come to Lancashire to meet a very successful pigeon fancier, Mr. Joe Dordian. Well, I've been involved with pigeons on and off basically since about 10 years of age. Uh, that started way back when I used to go to a, an old scrapyard. Uh, the, uh, the old man that used to run it, old John Murphy, uh, an Irishman, <coughs> the character was John. Uh, he used to have two wagons loaded, or back to wagons, and they were loaded with other, all sorts of fantails and such like. And I used to have the job of cleaning them out. Um, and as for influences, uh, there's been quite a number of, uh, of pigeon fanciers, uh, even pigeon fanciers in my own club uh, that I've been influenced by. Um, the ones that's outside the club, I would think, are John Brooker at uh, St Anne's and uh, Jim Sefton from uh, from Kendall. Been a policeman for the last 22 years now. Uh, Sometimes it can get a little bit stressful, and there's nothing like on a Saturday sitting out in your front garden or your back garden waiting for pigeons to come from the race. <laughs> Look at the end there, it's performing. <laughs> what is that grand end? Come on, come on, lass. Everybody talks and you'll hear them talking in the club or in the pub and they've got some one or two fights and that's the system, this is the system, this is the bee's knees, this is the way you've got to do it. In my opinion, it's every man to himself. You can see videos that they'll take their pigeons training and they'll do it to the letter of the law and they feed and water, they train the pigeons at certain times of the day. Well, quite honestly, the majority of pigeon flyers are working. So they can't do what the book says or the video says and I can prove, basically, I'll say I can prove them all wrong. I mean, a, year, a few years ago, it was always the Widowwood system. You've got to fly just your cocks. I have one particular hen, which has won quite a number of prizes, uh, up to 1996. She's won 23 cards, which is very good for a hen. She's also won uh, a meritorious award. Now, you don't keep pigeons like that in your loft. I quite honestly believe that without a doubt this is it's got to be one of the best, if not the best hen in the country. She has as a two year old, thirty six prizes. Joe Dardine's famous hen bird is called Chief Constable and this is uh, aptly named after Chief Constable of Lancashire, who is actual fatter lady. As a widowed hen. Uh, she's flown split from a cock, in some respects yes, she would be a widow then, uh, and then again she would be sitting eggs or sitting little young'uns. I play about with the widowhood system, but I don't fly it to the letter, to the, to the book. As regards the darkness system, up to this year I haven't tried it, but this year I intend to have a look at it. One of Belgium's top fans is Mr Herbox last year. Uh, offering me a substantial amount of money for that pigeon. And as you can see, she's still here. That particular pigeon last year uh, won me a video camera, new clock, and two hundred pounds in prize money and prizes up to now. She's won me over a thousand pounds. This year is the year when we are bringing into force testing for drugs. As a policeman, what is your opinion on this? Well, I think there's a lot of hype talked about drugs. Myself as a police officer and seeing drugs used or people taking drugs and using drugs and seeing them locked up in the cell and they've got the shakes, they want the drugs, they'll tell you anything to get out, to get the next fix. Now to me, if somebody I might be missing the point totally. I'm told by one certain pigeon fancier, you're wrong. But I don't think I am. If I'm proved wrong, then fair enough. But I honestly believe that if you're going to start giving your pigeons any, ty any type of announcing drug, 
tomorrow morning you don't know whether it's going to be an holdover, whether the pigeon's going to be liberated at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock or at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and especially when it's a channel race and they're going away Thursday night or Wednesday night for a Saturday's race. How can you get a drug to, to work that long and, and stay in the system? And me, I have the opinion that oh, the drugs that the humans take, the druggies that I deal with, they get a shot in the arm and they're buzzing for half an hour, an hour, two, hours, two or three hours, but then they've gone. Now, if we're, you're doing the similar thing with pigeons, it's not going to do them any good. And besides that, those pigeons have still got to be wanting to come home for the love of home, the mates there, or there's some other incentive to come home. But I certainly don't think it's just to get a fix of another drug when they get home. What has been your special moments in the sport, Joe? Well, there's been, uh, there's been quite a number. I mean, I've, I've had good wins, like everybody has good wins. Um, I mean, I've had first six with hens, stuff like that. I've had seventh open Nance National, 10,500 pigeons flying 455 miles. First time I ever sent. Not been that easy since, it never <laughs> will be. But it's, you know, special moments. This first, second, and third combine from Sartilly. Um, you know, great performance. Um, there's been a few. Joe, 1997 is a centenary year of our sport. Obviously, you've just said you've had many special moments. What is your aim for 1997? Well, it's just to basically improve on 1996. Uh, um, and that's down to myself and having a look at the pigeons and how I manage the pigeons, really. Uh, it would be very nice to uh, get one from Nance in the centenary race, but we'll have to wait and see. Joe, could you tell us what type of season 1997 has been? Apart from the centenary race, it's been uh, another good season, actually. Um, I've finished up um, for the third year in succession the highest prize winner in the Federation. Uh, and of course, highest prize winner again in the club. Um, it's been quite good. What would you say has been your special pigeon in 1997? The pigeon I call the judge, which um, only a fortnight ago was uh, second in the Racing Pigeon uh, £10,000 Championship and he actually was, uh, he, he won me £300, uh, beat by another good pigeon. Um, the, you got £1,500 for the uh, first prize, 300 for second and uh, 200 for the third. Uh, there wasn't much between those pigeons as there was there's obviously others, very good pigeons that didn't win anything. Uh, there's obviously throughout the country will be a lot of good pigeons besides my own, but he finished up, he was fortunate enough to be uh, uh, second. Uh, the things that he actually won, uh, what uh, was put forward was uh, he was uh, first club, first fed, first combine, uh, first club, second fed, second combine, first club, second fed, third combine and first club fourth fed um, for the four race coefficient. We've had the centenary race in June, we've had the RPRA inquiry into the race. What would you like to see implemented from the inquiry and how do you see the sport progressing? Well, um, it was a very unfortunate race. Um, I think possibly the people that was involved in it was probably under a little bit of pressure from the media. Uh, whether they were or not, I don't know. But certainly uh, this morning when I woke up, and it's only just now cleared up, the weather forecast was for good weather as it's just coming now. Uh, but when we're now like nearly half past 11, whereas at eight o'clock this morning and right up to half past 10, it was pouring down. So it's getting the forecast and the weather forecast right, and especially on a race like the Centenary Race.
Joe, what would you like to see uh, the future of the sport of racing pigeons in relationship to what we do for charities and uh, how you see the sport progressing? Well, the pigeon fanciers don't do themselves a lot of good in they don't get the credit that they really should be getting because they, throughout the country, every year, not just one year, but every year, pigeon fanciers raise tens and tens of thousands of pounds for charity. Uh, for so many various charities, for so many people in their own town, uh, the blind, there's so many various charities, it's untrue. And if you really, you, you could make a, a, a full list of people that, that are benefiting today from uh, pigeon, ch pigeon charities. Um, I myself have donated uh, prize money to uh, a charity at Bamber Bridge in the past. But it's, it's not just me, it's, it's everybody that's doing it, but they're not getting the recognition that they should be getting. Uh, and pigeon fanciers, to me, what they should be doing is going round to these uh, schools and giving talks on pigeons. I've done it on a couple of occasions and it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, you get the phone call, Joe, would you like to come and, or would you come and give us a talk on pigeons? Uh, yeah, all right, you know, when would you, yeah. And you never think it'll come round, yeah, I'll come back in six months, but sooner or later it comes round, then you get the phone call. Can you come, all uh, oh, right, <laughs> did I volunteer to do that? Heavens above. So you arrive at the school, and I always remember the first time I arrived, the pigeon basket, half a dozen pigeons, a couple of shore pens, a couple of clocks, uh, various uh, types of corn, ingredients, minerals, grit and stuff like that that we feed the pigeons and uh, lay them all out and all the kids are there and there's probably 80 children in front of me and I went on with a video thinking well uh, Marathon of the Sky which you're well aware of put that video on for an hour and uh, they'll be right but it never got to me being able to put the video on because I spoke basically for 10 minutes and thought, well, I'll let the children ask me the questions. And the, the hands went up for nearly two hours and it was absolutely and fantastic. They were asking questions which you wouldn't think they would, answer, would ask. But at the end of it, I was getting the wire from the uh, teachers saying, time, parents are outside waiting to go. They're all waiting for the kids. So I then turned around and I said, right, Children, we've got to finish now. We'll just have the last two questions uh, before we have to finish. Oh, and they're all going on. Oh, what more? So one little lad puts his hand up and said, uh, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, what's your question, Johnny? By which time I got to know all the kids' names, basically. And this little lad said, can I have your autograph? And so I said, <laughs> I said, you certainly can. You certainly can, no problem. And a little girl puts her hand up, can I have your autograph? For 20 minutes after that, session I was signing autographs it was absolutely unbelievable and the joy that those kids got from looking at the pigeons and and not only that within the week the same week I got 80 letters delivered to work all drawings all letters from the from all the school kids I'll tell you what they were posted around the police station the boss Brilliant. wanted them posted around the police station he was so chuffed with it. It's like next door but one of two grandchildren. They come round every Saturday when they come to visit their grandparents. I give them a couple of young'uns. They've got pigeons now in their own backyard. They love it. They come here with a scraper, they help me scrape out. I have to go over generally to f finish off <laughs> what they've started. But nevertheless, they've got their own pigeons. In years to come, they're going to be pigeon flyers. And, and another thing, we've got a lot of people now, people are retiring early a little bit earlier. They've got a little bit more time on their hands. What better hobby to have than racing pigeons, as you well know. You'll never ever be bored keeping racing pigeons. Good.